Hi, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. I posted a picture of this Polymoog on social media last week, and a couple people requested a Polymoog video. While I don't have the time to do a whole in-depth thing on the Polymoog, I thought I'd make a shorter video showing a very common Polymoog problem and the two most likely causes of this problem. First, I'll update you as to where I am on this Polymoog. I, I bought this one broken, as they usually are, and it powered on, and the LEDs and the push buttons were working, but there was no audio output. I checked the power supply, and I found that the plus and minus 15 volt rails were shorted and sitting at around a half a volt each. So I tracked down and replaced four shorted components. Uh, there were three shorted tantalum capacitors sprinkled throughout the synthesizer, and there was a shorted diode in the power supply. I also recapped the power supply, as the Lilac Matsushita capacitors were, were leaking. So now I've got all my power rails and I'm getting some audio output from the synthesizer. The problem we're going to be looking at in this video is dead or incorrect sounding notes. Uh, for example, check out mode 9 as we work our way down the keyboard. So clearly something isn't right here, but what exactly is going on? The Polymoog is one of those divide-down synthesizers, like most string synthesizers. Except most string synthesizers are just dividing down one master oscillator. On the Polymoog, there are two high-frequency oscillators, located here and here. Each of them has a top octave generator chip that generates each of the 12 musical notes in the highest octave. By having two of these, the Polymoog is able to offer both a sawtooth oscillator and a pulse wave oscillator that you can tune separately in order to get a far more diverse palette of sounds than you could with a single divided down oscillator. So the top octave is generated on these two cards here, and then those notes are divided down on this board back here, uh, which has 24 divider chips to generate the frequencies for each key on the synthesizer. Bear in mind that the outputs of all of those chips are still square waves, even for the notes that are later going to be sawtooth. They haven't been shaped yet. So those square waves are carried off by these white and brown connectors uh, down to three motherboards, like this one here, filled with these little cards which are called modulator cards. So this is the center motherboard and there are two others that look just like it. On the motherboard you can see these rows of film capacitors in the front and the back and there's a row of modulator cards, one for each key on the keyboard. On each modulator card, there's a polycom chip that, among other things, includes a ladder filter. So in a nutshell, the motherboards and the modulator cards shape the waveforms, the square waveforms that were generated by the divider chips, and they, they form the sounds that you hear out of the direct output of the synthesizer. So backing up to what we were hearing before, I, I was in mode 9 with both sawtooth and square wave oscillators on. If I turn on only the square wave oscillator, we can hear the majority of the keys are working and sound correct. If I turn only the sawtooth waveform on, we can hear that there's a problem with a lot of the sawtooth notes. Also, if I hop over to the strings mode, you'll notice that I, as I work my way down the keyboard, more and more keys are out. So notice how C stops here, and the C below it is also out. So all indicators point to several of those frequency divider chips being out. In fact, when reviving a dead Polymoog, almost all the time I find a handful of these chips that have failed. And we can confirm this with the oscilloscope. So with all the, the connectors and wires down here, it's a little tight to probe the actual chips, which are uh, wedged in between the, the, uh, the rows of uh, connectors. They have these uh, wires over them. But what we can do is we can jam the uh, scope probe uh, into the connector and we can view the outputs of the dividers from there. So the square wave oscillator is on the left half and the sawtooth is on the right half indicated with the brown wires. The higher frequencies are toward the back 
and they get divided down additional stages each time you move towards the front. So we can start with this um, this square square wave oscillator and we can see that that uh, pin 1 is okay, pin 2, pin 3, 4, 5, 6. So we'll move forward one chip or one connector. We can see that that is a lower frequency as it's being divided down one, another stage. And then we can move to the, uh, to the last chip. And actually you can see here this one is stuck in between logic levels. So it's not... Uh, it, this is stuck at ground, 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 stuck at a, a negative DC. So, so this divider chip here is bad. This is um, IC17. So we've already found one bad divider chip. So here the uh, the very first sawtooth connector I found a bad divider chip at IC5. So this is pin 1 and and that looks okay. Uh, pin 2 there's nothing there. Pin 3 looks okay. Pin 4 looks bad. Pin 5 looks okay and pin 6 looks bad. And uh, the reason that we're seeing uh so, some uh, frequencies there is because the ones that we're looking at um, pins 1, 3, and 5 that are that are working are coming from the top octave chip and the ones that aren't working pins 2, 4, and 6 are coming from the divider chip. So because this is the highest divider chip I'm not going to be able to verify that the two divider chips below it are working because they'll be missing their inputs. So I'm going to have to wait on checking that until I replace this this bad chip here at IC5. So here's another bad sawtooth divider chip at IC14. See that one stuck high. Stuck high on uh, most of the pins. Uh, so there's one chip below this one, so I'm not going to be able to check that one out now. And here's another bad sawtooth chip at IC23. So here I've pulled the divider board and I'm going to replace the chips and of course pulling this board is a pain in the ass like pretty much everything with the polymode because there are 20, 27 connectors you have to disconnect in order to be able to remove this board. So the chips are MM5823 chips uh, which are of course obsolete. So I've made some drop-in replacements, the SC5823 and I'll be installing these along with some uh, IC sockets for the chips that I replace. These chips are used in other synthesizers as well, including the Moog MG1 and the Liberation. So if you own any of these synthesizers, you might want to pick up some of these chips from my website and make yourself a survival kit. So something to point out while I'm here. So one of the uh, three shorted tantalum capacitors was, was on this board. and. Again, the only thing I've done uh, so far is, is replace uh, shorted components and recap the power supply. Uh, eventually, because these tantalum capacitors are prone to short out, I'd want to go through and um, change out those uh, the other tantalum capacitors. So this is one of the two top octave or high frequency uh, oscillator boards. This is the other one, and you can see the tantalum capacitor there. While it didn't fail as a short, uh, clearly it's let out its magic smoke. So uh, dodgy tantalum capacitors uh, plague the Polymoog as well as uh, a lot of other synthesizers. So I'm relatively lucky. Uh, these four chips were the only of the, the 24 divider chips that were bad. So you can see on the one, one that I replaced we get the uh, the square wave and then all the way down to the uh, to the lowest octave we're getting our we're getting our square waves there so uh, now that I have verified that all the divider chips are fixed I can uh, put this board back in and reconnect the uh, motherboard connectors so now with the divider chips replaced and, and both saw and square waveforms there in mode 9 this is sounding a lot better
we get way more notes from our uh, strings mode. Obviously there are still some issues. I mentioned there are two common causes for the problem of dead or incorrect sounding keys. We just addressed the first, the divider chips. The second most common cause of this is the shitty connector that they used for the modulator cards. Something as innocent as moving your polymog across the room can cause one or both of the oscillators to go out for a given key, or can make a key sound louder and brighter than the others as we just heard when I ran down the keyboard. Uh, in this case, the modulator card can be reseated and the problem may go away. To do this, you need to pop the top lid of the synth off, as it is here. You need to unscrew uh, some screws from these uh, upper boards, which fold up on hinged standoffs. Then you can pull a modulator card straight up out of its socket like this, and then, uh, and then just reseat it. Now, Bear in mind, if your finger grazes a neighboring card, you breathe too heavily, uh, you push too hard and the board flexes like this, or you just look at the thing funny, uh, you're probably going to knock other modulator cards out of whack in the process. So if I recall correctly, Moog had used a connector with non-standard pitch, so unfortunately the Polymo can't easily be made more reliable by replacing these problematic connectors. And that's a major reason why I won't take shipped-in Polymoog repairs, and when I sell a Polymoog, I'll want it picked up in person. While divider chips and the edge card connectors are the most common causes of the problem that we looked at, I've seen many root causes for these types of problems, including defective modulator cards, failed film capacitors on the motherboards, and dirty or damaged key contacts. As always, troubleshooting first and then repairing is going to give you better results than a guess-and-check type approach. Anyway, I've got much more work to do on this Polymoog, but I hope you found this to be an interesting peek inside the Polymoog synthesizer. I'm SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Synth